Christ. You wanted to come in on something, Lauren. Um, well, I guess to better understand why someone like Brian might, might be upset about it, you were clearly upset about the idea of Roe versus, Ro Ro versus Wade being taken from you. But think about it. A man can do a lot less to ensure he's not drafted than a woman can do to ensure she doesn't need an so I would say the difference is Roe v. Wade does affect, there have been women since Roe v. Wade has been overturned that weren't able to have access to an abortion. There haven't been men in the last 50 years that have been drafted. So, and, and it's not well, something- Well, men don't have any reproductive rights to begin with. That's, that's because true. the baby isn't in your body. So once the baby's born, there's no, it, the laws are gender neutral. There's no, so it, once the baby's born, it, it, what happens is whichever parent, if there's a one primary, um, uh, one primary caregiver, then they're entitled to child support from the other. So child support is actually going up from um, women to men now because there are more men that are in the primary caretaker role. Or neither of you can be the parent and you guys can give it up for adoption now, neither of you. But once it's, it's so fair because it's literally once the baby's in the stomach of the woman, then she has rights that the male doesn't have. But as soon as the child is born, it's, it's equal. So you have a problem with biology, honestly. No, I don't have a problem with biology. Okay, so what's your problem? What do you mean? That you're mad that men don't have reproductive rights, but men don't carry children. Well, the, there's whatever the choice may be. Let's say the woman wants to get rid of the child. The man has no say there. If she wants to keep the child, the man has no say there. Uh, and then also there's a term called, uh, I'm trying to recall what it is, uh, force or not. It's uh, legal paternal surrender. So let's say the woman wants to have the kid, the guy doesn't, they're in a legal paternal surrender scenario, the guy could say, well, I don't want to have any legal obligation to the child. Mm -hmm. So not being subject to having to pay for child support, for example. Okay, so this is not, so there's a reproductive right, I guess. I didn't even know about no, that. No, it's, well, it's not, no, that's not something that is the case. Oh, well, that's not, f so once the child is born, for instance, if the woman said, I don't actually want it after it's born, but the father wants it, even if she wants to give it away for adoption, she can't now. He, as long as he's fit to be a that, parent, he can have, he's now the cu primary custody, he is now the primary custodian, and she sure. has to pay him child support. So once the child is born, tell me where it's not fair. It's only when the child yes. is... That's but I'm not I'm saying before the child is born. Yeah. So do you think if, no if men carried the child, do you think it would be like well, my that's a biological? Exactly. So because it's a biological impossibility, I'm sorry that the world made it so that the child is in our bodies. And that's just the reality of biology. It's not because we set out to have it that way. I think a lot of women would love if their husbands could carry the child instead or the men. men could that's carry not the it. argument I'm, I'm making. So what is the argument you're making that well, while the saying, child is in that? that this idea that abortion is necessarily a gendered issue, men just have no reproductive rights to begin with. They don't have reproductive rights when the child is not using their body as a host. That's the only time they don't have reproductive rights that are equal to women. Sure. Okay. So that's an issue with biology. I don't know what to tell you there. It's not, we didn't decide to be the ones that carry children, but we are the ones that carry children, which means that that is the case. Now, if men could carry children too, I'd be all in favor of them being able to make the same decisions with their body that women should be able to make. Right, there's obviously biological differences. But again, the point I'm trying to make is, is that men don't have any reproductive rights. Now, there can be, we can have a debate over what that would potentially look like but what I'm trying to say is, is men don't have any reproductive rights. But men aren't carrying children, and that's why, which sure. is a bio yes, I agree yeah. With so, you. so it's a bio biological <laughs> inequality that I guess for men it sucks in this instance. I don't know how we got to that. I don't anyway. either. <laughs> I don't know where else going with that, but did you have something more, Lauren? Or um, not that I remember. I would just point out that this is a draft registration <laughs> card here, and note it says men 18 to 25. You can handle this. You can handle this. And uh, there's, you know, don't let the colors fool you. That's, that's the registration portion. Uh, all men have to do this when they turn 18. Uh, do most men do it? What are the, I'm just curious, what are the like? Well, I mean, I have, um, so I'm, I'm not for, like from America, so mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of other people who have kind of immigrated later, and I have had some of my like college friends who've gotten green cards later on in life kind of joke about, hey, if, if it takes just a few more years, I don't have to register for the draft. Mm -hmm. So it is something that they at least are prompted about, especially if you're kind of Do you get like an email when you're 18? Like, I just don't know how it works. Yeah. Like, how does it, do you get that in the mail? <laughs> like... No, but I mean, in every single post office in the United States, there's going to be something like this. How and many of you guys have seen that? Like, I feel like it's... Well, it, 
<laughs> Who knows? It's if not it's a different. part of our lives in America, and it hasn't been for a long time. Besides the fact that people can just say men have to register and women can't, and I agree that's unfair. No one should have to register. But of course, people are not going to be people are figuring out how to put food over their head, food on their table, a roof over their heads. Nobody cares about the draft right now. It's not a thing. Well, it's, it's very easy for you to be so dismissive over something that is actually quite important. But it's not important to anyone's daily activities of living in 2023. And it's not. It's not. How? How is it? Because in the event of a war, it would be very important. But we've had wars since the, that we haven't used it. A war that required a draft. We haven't even spoken other than a in these spaces. A war that required a draft. We haven't, we haven't even talked about, in, except in these spaces, the possibility of reinstating the draft. Every time we talk about going to war, we have a military full of volunteers. And I think the government would do more if we needed more recruits to incentivize people to volunteer, paying them more, which I think they should get paid more, giving them more benefits. I think those are ways we could recruit people. We have not, we have not had an enemy that necessitated a draft. I mean, we went through 9-11 and we still didn't necessitate the draft. Because our, well, okay, now we can have an argument over whether it was appropriate to have invaded the it Middle East. It wasn't, in my opinion, yeah, but that doesn't so mean that you did anyway, yes, so I why, not, why didn't we use the draft? I think it was I a agree. mistake. However, there are two opponents that occur to me where a draft may be necessary. For example, China or Russia. And when that time comes, then we can talk about it. But right now, I don't think... When that time comes, what are you talking about? It's not happening right now. Nobody's <laughs> talking about God. using... Okay, right now, if we went to war with China or Russia, I think it would be a huge deal, and we would all be discussing what to do, but I think the first step wouldn't be to, okay, get on the news, the draft is reinstated, everyone pack up, all men pack up, go to your local airport and get ready to be shipped out. I don't think that's how things would go. I think one, we do have a, the biggest military in the world full of volunteers currently. We, I don't know if we need more people. Hold on. Alvin Sam donated $99. Jasmine, you're failing to understand. The draft itself is not the argument. The requirement to apply is and that is significant to a man's daily life because it carries legal consequences if we refuse to apply. If Don't the biggest you, issue for a man in 2023 right now is that he had to spend 10 minutes registering for something that's very likely to not come to fruition, then men have it far better than I thought they did. But I guess it's not just the time it takes to register. It's the legal weight behind what you're registering for. Like as a man, just in terms of principle, is it fair? Is it right that you should have to volunteer for the or reg register for the no, draft? No, it's you, not. I Right, but shouldn't don't you understand people who want to tackle that now? Like, shouldn't that be a bigger deal? Sure, I, and if you if that's an issue that you're really passionate about, sure. But I think that if we were to make a list of issues going on in our country right now, it wouldn't be in the top twenty, in my opinion. Now, if there's some guy who just feels like he's being psychologically tormented because he's so afraid of going into the draft, then sure. But a lot of a lot of Americans are are concerned about other things that are affecting their daily life instead but of. But let's say there was some event. I mean, again, it's very dismissive. Yeah, we haven't had a draft in a very long time. Is it looking like there's going to be a draft? No. But if there's some scenario where shit hits the fan, there's not going to be like a protracted discussion over, oh, should we uh, do the draft? Like it's going to come quick and it's going to be like, okay, you're drafted. In, in addition to that, he did mention some of the other things. So it is technically, uh, let me see here. It is technically a felony. Failure to register may be fined up to $250,000, imprisoned for up to five years. Uh, in, a, in addition to being subject to prosecution, failure to register may cause you to permanently forfeit eligibility of certain benefits. So federal and many state laws require registration age men to be registered with the Selective Service to remain eligible for applying for the following benefits. Student financial aid, government employment, employment with the U.S. Postal Service, job training, and U.S. citizenship for male immigrants. Yeah, so like I said, I don't like this. I, I want this to be changed. But I don't think, I think for men, there are a lot of things we should be focusing on. The education gap, the issues with, I want you guys to make more money, to get paid more for your work. I wouldn't right now be picketing for for eliminating the draft because even though you have to register and even though there could be those consequences like you said they're not usually enforced i haven't heard of a case at least maybe i'm just unfamiliar with any case where someone's no, been in peace okay in peacetime certainly they're not going to be enforced although the when it comes to criminal prosecution not really being enforced however yes. the negative consequences that i just listed that's there's that's not a question of enforcement like if you don't register for the draft then you're 
grasped when it comes to, you know, the financial aid thing I talked about getting certain jobs. If like, this is what I mean, if someone had a petition and they're like to abolish the job, I would sign it. But am I going to spend my time, my resources, my energy right now fighting for this issue? I don't think, like I said, if we, if we pulled Americans right now, it's about to be a voting year. What is your top issues? I don't think the draft would even get like 3%. And that's because there's just a general lack of caring when it comes to men's issues. No, I think it's just a general States, lack of you caring wanted to come in on something. about something that's not happening. Uh, I was just it is happening, though. There, there is a requirement for men to <laughs> register for the selective <laughs> service. Now, the, we're not in war. It's not wartime. So, so there's people not don't care about draft. it because it's not affecting their lives. If, they, if it was affecting their lives, I think it would be a voting issue. It's clearly not. It's only the only people who care no, about it are well, the manosphere. It's never going to be an issue because it's it's just the de facto. It's the default. Men are just viewed as the disposable sex. No, I think it's not so an it's issue never because just, it's never m- be men an are issue. worried about how they can feed their families. They're not worried about potentially being kicked into a draft, which doesn't seem like it's coming to us anytime soon. <laughs> Five hundred dollars to meet me. <laughs> I think that does trigger a mute. All right, that's fine. I'm tired of this issue anyway. Hold on, let me see. 